God made man. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 2. We read that he made him on the same day as the animals. You've heard me say that before. God could have made the animals on the fifth day and man on the sixth day to show that man is in a different category from the animals. But he did make the fish and the birds on the fifth day, but he didn't make the animals on the earth. Why didn't he do that? I mean, we talk of animal kingdom as birds, fish, and all the living creatures on the earth. But God split them up, the fish and the birds separate. And on the sixth day, the first part of the day, he made the animals from the same dust that he made man, except that uh, he didn't form the shape of the animals. He just said, let there be animals. But when it came to man, he shaped him. And um, the internal organs of animals are very similar to the internal organs of man. Man's very different from the birds and the fish. But very similar in his body structure to animals. And then God breathed into man, you know. And he suddenly became a living soul. He got a spirit as a result of that God breathing which made him have a conscience that was the image of God there that made him aware that he's a moral creature answerable to his creator but he had this body as well so the reason why God made man as I understand it in the same day as the animals was to tell him one thing and to tell all of us one thing. Uh, you are going to face a downward pull because you are made of the same dust as the animals to the things of earth. But you are going to be different from the animals in the sense that I breathed into you and you have an upward pull. And if you are born again, then you remember Jesus breathed upon his disciples in John chapter 20 after the resurrection and gave them the Holy Spirit. So we've got something more of an upward pull and all of us face this upward pull and the downward pull all the time. The Bible calls it the spirit and the flesh struggling. And what man, the Lord was saying to man is if you keep yielding to the downward pull one day you'll be like the animals. That's why I created both of you on the same day. And you can make a choice either to descend to the level of the animals by keeping on responding to the pulls of the dust part of you or you can rise up to the heavenlies by responding to that other pull I put within you. You may ask, why didn't God just remove this downward pull? Well, then we would have been like the planets who obey God automatically, uh, like these robots. You know, you can make a robot. God could have made Adam a robot in the sense that he had flesh and blood and bones just like us, but uh, exactly like a human being, but inwardly programmed like a robot who would just automatically do what God says, just like the planets. The planets cannot be sinners, and the planets cannot be holy. And if God had made Adam like that, Adam could never have been a son of God, just like a planet cannot be a son of God. A dog cannot be a son of God, because even though a dog got choice, it doesn't have a conscience. So you need two things to become a child of God or a sinner. A dog cannot be a sinner, because even though it has choice, it doesn't have conscience. Planets don't have choice or conscience. Dogs are a little better. They've got choice but no conscience. Man is choice plus conscience. That means you can choose and your conscience tells you which to choose but you can disobey it. So that's the thing that makes you a sinner or a saint. So that's how God made Adam. And you know the story how um, 
when he went into the garden, Adam and Eve, let's look at them together. They both responded in the same way to the temptation. And it's very interesting to see that the first temptation that Adam and Eve faced was related to the body and the mind. Remember that. And you'll see later on that the first temptation that Jesus faced in the wilderness was also related to the body and the mind. The addiction of the body and the addiction of the mind to something God has forbidden. Turn to Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> uh, we read there when the devil suggested to Eve, um, you know, has God really said? That's how he starts. You know, that's how he comes to us also. Is there any verse in the Bible which says you can't do this? What's wrong with this? Why don't you try it out? There's not really any particular verse that says um, you can't smoke or drink or try out drugs or watch movies or have a television or there are no verses about many things but remember this the devil starts like that has God really said has God really said Genesis 3 1 and whenever you find yourself looking in scripture not to become holy but to commit sin you know that's not the Holy Spirit leading you to scripture but the devil you know you say well there's no verse that says I can't do that or you argue about a verse that is in scripture saying no it doesn't really mean that uh, once you begin to twist God's word to suit your lusts, uh, you're on the downward slope immediately. It's just a matter of time before you reach the bottom of the pit, even if you call yourself a believer or a CFC believer or anything, baptized or whatever it is. Once you begin to go to the Bible to find an excuse for your sin, you've already started going down. Remember that. Don't look in the scriptures to find comfort for your sin. <clears throat> there are preachers who fall into adultery and then where do they find their comfort? In David. In other words, they go to scripture to find a comfort saying, well, David committed adultery and he still remained king, so I fell into adultery and I can still be a preacher or an elder. Well, what's he going into the Bible for? Not to learn how to repent, but learn to learn how we unify sin, it's okay. I can still uh, come back to a ministry or be a king or something like that. So it's very serious when you go to the scripture to find justification for your sin. God did not give us the Bible to help us to find comfort in our sin but to make us holy. So that's one of the first things you've got to remember. And then, uh, the, he, the, and then he tries all types of arguments. You know, God knows that if it's like this, he appeals to her reason. Uh, God knows, verse 5, that if you eat, your eyes will be open, etc., etc. And that's the other thing you ought to bear in mind. When you start using your reason to justify the wrong that your conscience tells you is wrong, you know, your conscience tells you one thing, that's wrong. But your reason says, but you know this, 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 and finally you justify it and go by your reason. 